Hi there, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equation. This is video number 10 for chapter 9. The topic is partial differential equations. In this video, we will take another look at the wave equation and uh, derive the solution for that using a completely different method. And the method was due to the Lambert and this solution is called the Lambert solution of wave equation. So let's consider our wave equation in one space dimension, utt equals c square uxx. So we now claim that the two functions u1 and u2 as follows, u1 function of x and t equal to some function phi depending only on one variable, that is x plus ct. And the second function u2, let's call it psi, it's just the name for the function. And that psi function now depends only on the variable x minus ct. Okay. And we claim that and the two functions like this for any arbitrary functions phi and psi would be solutions for the wave equation. And then if that is true, then by the principle of superposition, the sum of these two will also be a solution of the wave equation. And therefore the solution can be written as phi of x plus ct plus psi x minus ct. Okay, so what remains are the two things. First is to show that this claim is correct. And then second is to show how do we figure out these two functions which are arbitrary right now. Now let's first prove our claim that u1, u2 are solutions. So what one needs to do is simply plug in the solution u1 and u2 into the wave equation and verify that the equation holds. Let's take u1. We can compute the partial derivatives by using the chain rule. So u1 sub x, what would that be? Well, that will be the function phi differentiated once and then take the argument for the function phi and differentiate this in x and because um, t is considered constant so x differentiating x you just get one so you simply just get that so a partial derivative in x will just result in the ordinary derivative in phi and then the second derivative here will be just c the phi um, double prime now the partial derivative in t is slightly different. Um, taking the derivative here and then taking the an argument here and differentiate this in t, consider x as a constant, then we have a constant c in the front. So each t partial derivative will introduce a ordinary derivative in phi and then multiplying the whole thing by a c. So if you differentiate it one more time, then you get phi double prime and you get c square. Okay, now we can easily verify. So u1 sub tt is this guy here, which we copied here. And then we see that phi double prime is just uxx. So you just get c square u1 xx. So you see clearly u1 satisfies the wave equation. And the proof for u2 is completely similar. We will skip it and I encourage you to try it. The next step in the construction of the solution is to find the two functions phi and psi. And these are usually um, determined by initial conditions. So for wave equation, we usually have two initial conditions. One is the initial wave shape, the u function at t equals zero is given, let's call this f of x. And the second is u sub t at t equals zero is given, and let's call that g of x. So f of x and g of x are two functions that are given. So with this setting, we will now derive the formula for the solution for the wave equation. 
This means we would determine the function phi and psi by the initial conditions f and g. So it will involve f and g in their expressions. Let's check the first condition, ux0 equal f. So put it in t equals 0, and ux0 is just phi x plus psi x, and that must equal to fx. So phi plus psi equal f. This is one constraint. Now let's look at the second initial condition, the u sub t at t equals 0 shall be given as g of x. Then let's compute u sub t first, taking the um, expression for the solution u differentiated in t, we get phi prime, and then you have a c in the front, and then you have psi prime, and then you get a negative c in the front. And then let's set t to be 0, and then we'll just get c phi prime, because t is 0, minus c psi prime of x, and because t is 0. And then this must equal to g of x. So we get this is the constraint. We can um, manipulate it a little bit, um, move the c term to the right, so we get 1 over c here, and then we get phi prime minus psi prime, which is just phi minus psi, the whole function, and derivative. Okay. So in this form, one can um, solve this by integrating. Let's pick a random point, call it x0. It's arbitrary. Don't worry about it. It will eventually go away. So x0 is arbitrary, and then we're going to integrate from x0 to x, where x is a variable. So then this derivative here would equal to the function at x minus the function at x0, which we move to the right-hand side. And then if you integrate the right-hand side, take 1 over c outside, and then you have the integral from x0 to x of g. And uh, since we have an x here, let's change the variable. Let's call it s. You can call it anything. gs integrating ds. Okay, so um, we rewrite it as capital M, where M is just this number, which is this number. So x0 is arbitrary. This is actually an arbitrary number, but remember it's arbitrary in this way because it's related to, to this number that you integrate. Okay, so we can write it a little bit more compact into this way. So remember now, this now is the second um, constraint. The first one is phi plus psi equal to fx. So we have two equations to solve for the two unknown functions. Okay, so let's collect our two equations. And that's the first one from boundary condition number one. And this is the second one from the boundary condition number two. Okay. So and phi and psi are the two unknowns. So we want to solve for it in terms of f and g. It's not a difficult thing to do. Um, well, so for example, if you want to compute phi, you can add these two equations, then psi goes away, and then you divide it by two. Then you get phi, which you write out, we take this expression. And for psi, you can take equation one minus equation two, and then phi is gone, and you get 2 psi of the right-hand side, and you divide it by 2, and this is what you will get. So we have identified the two solutions of phi and psi, um, but the way these solutions entered, um, the functions entered into the solution of the wave equation is in this specific form. So phi will be entered as phi of x plus ct. So let's figure that out. So wherever you have x here, you want to replace it with x plus ct. And then if we write out, and this is what we get. And then for the second one, for the function psi, in the solution is psi of x minus ct. So replace all the x with x minus ct here, and then here. Okay, 
and then we have that. And then we can um, add up these two functions and get the solution for the wave equation, which will happen in the next slide. Yeah, we can um, already comment on that um, m over 2 is positive here and negative here. They'll cancel each other. And then we will have half of this f plus this f with the two different um, way of x minus ct and x plus ct here. And then we'll have the integral terms. Okay, let's um, put them together and write out. So u is phi of x plus ct plus psi of x minus ct. And recalling the previous um, slide, we know that we can collect the terms with f here. We'll have a half of f x plus ct and then plus f of x minus ct. And then we have these two integral terms. So um, one can um, manipulate a little bit this, this integration here because we are integrating the same thing. And then here you're integrating from x0 to x plus ct. And here you're integrating from x0 to x minus ct. And if you subtract that, and that is the same as integrating from x minus ct to x plus ct. Okay, so um, putting that observation in, and then we can combine these two terms and write it as one term. Okay, so here is the conclusion, the final formula. This is the D'Alembert's solution for wave equation with the initial u value as f and then u sub t is given as g and then the solution takes this form. Okay, that's all for this derivation of this um, important and I must say rather elegant way of finding the solution for the wave equation. In our next video, we'll have some discussions and we'll take some examples. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.